In this video, I'm going to talk about validation. Um, so, how to ensure that the values that were entered uh, when a user created or edited an item are valid entries. So, what you'll see here on our products list, um, you'll see some of these values here are in brackets. Now, the way that SharePoint displays a negative uh, currency is showing in brackets. So, you'll see here I've put a cost price negative $1.10. Obviously, it doesn't really make sense for this example. Um, so we want to make sure that people don't enter negative values. Um, also, you'll see here that I've entered a cost price higher than my sales price, uh, resulting in negative profit. So I want to make sure that these uh, these don't happen on my list. Um, you know, Common sense might dictate that people shouldn't do that, but I want to ensure that these values uh, are not entered. So first, let's, let's start with the first example. I don't want my cost price to be a negative value. So in order to do that, I'll have to go to the list settings and I have to put validation on the column. So I have the option for validating set, validation settings here. This is validation for the whole list and I'll show you that in a moment. But what we want to do now is validate just a single column. So first one I'm going to do is cost price. So I don't want my cost price to be a negative number. So when I go to the column settings, and I expand the validation section here. You'll see here that it says the formula must be true to pass validation and also gives me an example here of how to reference my column name here. So what I'm going to do here is I'll put a formula in and I'll say the result must equal so cost price so if you put uh, the, the column name in square brackets, that's how you reference that in the formula. So cost cost price is greater than zero. So that's what has to happen for the validation to pass. If it doesn't, I can set a message here to display to the user. So I'll say the cost price must be greater than zero. And I press OK. Now I'll go back to my products list. Now, what one thing to really notice here, the reason that I set these negative values first, is that even though I've put validation on a particular column, the columns that already exist don't have the, the validation assigned to them. So this negative value, even though it's not allowed, it still remains here because the value existed before I added in the validation. But if I edit the item, and I have a negative number here. If I try to save it, I'm now going to get an error message saying cost price must be greater than zero. And that's really what we want. So I'll take the negative number away, press save, and there you go. So I validated an individual column there and made sure that that column has a valid entry. Now what about the, the profit? Uh, I don't have control over the validation of the profit because it's a calculated field. So really, the problem I have here is how do I make sure that the sales price is always higher than the cost price so that I don't have a result here that's negative. Now I can't do that using column validation uh, because the rule around column validation is that uh, column validation cannot reference other columns. So all I can do is say the existing column must be uh, a certain value or, or whatever. I can't reference other columns. So if I want to reference other columns in my validation, go to list settings, and I go to the list validation settings. Now this is actually much friendlier. It gives me uh, kind of a, a dra not a drag and drop, but I can uh, click on items here and they'll automatically appear. And you'll see I've entered a formula in here. So I'll recreate this so you can see how it was done. So I press equals. Again, similar to the column validation, I'm entering the formula that I that I want to calculate to allow the validation to pass. So I always want my uh, sales price. If I double click on it, automatically it's created here. I always want my sales price to be higher than my cost price. If I double click on that, it just appears there. Simple as that. There's much more complex things you can do. Uh, you can click on this link down here to learn more about the syntax or Google it. And um, they're very similar to Excel formulas if you've used those before. Um, this is obviously just a very basic one. 
Uh, so then I put a message here saying the cost price cannot be higher than the sales price. I'll press save. And now what I'll see here when I go back to the products list, again, as I explained before, because these values were entered before I did the, set the validation, the SharePoint is not going to automatically correct this. But if I go back in to the item, and I go to edit the item, I try to save it. I can now see I've got an error message here that says the cost price cannot be higher than the sales price. So I will reduce that to 0.90, press save, and there we go. So we've just done some simple validation on the form, and now we can make sure that all the entries that are put in here um, are not going to produce strange results like negative numbers or negative profit.